What did they do? What, if I was to summarize Acts uh, 19 verses 19 and 20, what, what was the key to this astounding revival in this dark place? The people made costly choices to rid their lives of anything that displeased the Lord. Anything that displeased the Lord. And they, they publicly, did you see what it says? Look back at verse 19. Ephesus experienced costly choices. The level of their desire to repent and follow the Lord was seen in the costly choices to rid their lives of anything that displeased him. Their example, reported by God in his word, should stir us up. We should be asking ourselves, have, have we likewise carefully purged out of our lives any of those landing places for the devil? Is there anything in my life more important than God? Satan will will zero in on that. He'll, la he'll, he'll land like a fly, you know, right there on anything that displeases God. And he'll just camp and multiply. That's the goal. So we get rid of anything that draws the, the attention of the devil. As you look at verse 19, it's an amazing verse. What did God lead Paul to do that prompted such a huge response in public? What did Paul say to them? Have you ever thought about that? When you read verse 19, what did he do without the internet? He didn't tweet them and he didn't message them and, and he didn't buy airtime and he didn't, you know, have Google AdWords. How did he do that? What was he saying to them that caused such a huge public response? In fact, have you ever wished that you could actually hear what Paul told them to make them respond so dramatically to the evil around them? What did Paul say that made them go home and search through their houses and gather and, and come and publicly burn expensive media? That's what this was. The, the word books, actually it's a, a, it's a technical word for what was purchased at that temple to Diana. Uh, the, the, the seventh wonder, one of the seven wonders of the world, the media of that place that was, that was quintessentially uh, worshiping the occult materialism and sensuality. And the people paid dearly for the, the, the magical arts of that place. And they had them in their homes. And they got saved, but they still had them in their homes. What did Paul say that made them search out their house and come and publicly renounce that stuff? That's, that's why I love Bible study. Those are the kind of questions I'm, I'm thinking constantly. Well, did you know the Holy Spirit captured for each of us Paul's message of what he actually told the saints to hear? I mean, I've heard a lot of people say, I wish I was there, I could have heard it. Well, you know what's better than being there? Not everything Paul said was wonderful. What is wonderful, God caught for us. And Paul wrote it down under the inspiration of God's Spirit. In fact, let's go to Ephesians. You're in Acts. Go to the right. Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. And look at chapter 4. And I'll just summarize what Paul said in chapter 4. Because we can listen to what Paul preached, what Paul taught, and what Paul prayed for these saints. And that's what the book of Ephesians is. It's the, it's the cream of all the messages he gave for all those hours in that rented school that the Holy Spirit wanted all of us to hear. He wanted them to hear the ones they heard. He wants all of us to hear these. And so they're written down for us. As we listen to that, basically, it should stir us to want to empty out any part of our lives that grieves, quenches, and displeases God and shut any doors for the devil and his demons in our lives. Because Satan is not interested in a head-on confrontation with Christ. He usually doesn't kick down the front door and walk in. Rather, he'll always quietly slip into any unguarded areas. He'll come in the back door, any door left unlocked, any window left open, any other means of establishing a beachhead. And just like germs, Satan and his system are relentlessly checking every door and every window and every security system of our life. They are the ultimate pathogens. And Paul preached and taught and discipled and reasoned longer and deeper here in Ephesus than any other church because they were in the darkest place. 
So he stayed the longest and taught the most. 